and today is Tuesday, September the 10th, 2019. It's 10 a.m. It's my pleasure to call to order today's meeting of the Tennessee Department of Commerce and Insurance Board of Funeral Directors and Embalmers. Ms. Bohannon, will you please call the roll? Dennis Bridges? Here. Robert Davis? Here. Jeff Duffer? Here. Clark McKinney? Here. Charles Rahm? Here. Robert Shackelford? Here. Mr. President, all board members are here and accounted for. Thank you, Ms. Bohannon. The um, next item on the agenda is the review and adopt the meeting agenda. Move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rahm and we have a second by Mr. McKinney. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item will be to review and approve the July the 9th, 2019 board meeting minutes. Motion to approve. We have a motion by Mr. McKinney. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Davis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to the legal report. Ms. Spicer. Good morning, everyone. I may paraphrase some. Um, as you can tell, I'm losing my voice a little bit. I think it's just allergies, but bear with me and we'll get through this. Number one is Funeral Director 2019-024411. Um, as you see, there's some disciplinary history, one complaint from 2009. The summary is as follows. This is a consumer complaint alleging that the funeral director was unresponsive regarding issues receiving the obituary and failure to request the death certificate and delay in the cremation. Uh, the matter was referred to investigation, and based on the investigation, um, the funeral director provided detailed information about all of the delays, including the newspaper being sold, new procedures put in place, and delays with the cremation were due to delays by the medical examiner. Based on the response and investigation, legal's recommendation is closure of this complaint. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mr. McKinney, and the second is by Mr. Rahm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Number two, Funeral Establishment 2019-03-2301. There is some disciplinary history from 2013. The summary includes this is also a consumer complaint alleging that family members were not not notified of a body being moved from one church to another, then immediately placed in the ground without the family being present for the burial. There's another issue regarding the insurance policy, which in fact was actually lapsed. Um, so obviously there were no funds to be used to pay for the funeral. That's when um, you now have two additional family members involved. Um, what this boils down to is a conflict between family members because once the insurance policy was lapsed, another family member stepped in to pay for the funeral and there was a disagreement about the arrangements. Um, in fact, the sister paid for the services. Um, she indicated that she and the aunt made the arrangements for the deceased. Um, and the only remaining issue was the clothing that had been provided uh, was apparently not the clothing that they used. Um, all of the family members were interviewed by the investigator and they agreed chairs nor tent or at the graveside service. Other than the issue with the clothing, um, there was no other information provided in the original complaint. And as I stated, this seems to be a disagreement between family members about how the funeral and burial would proceed. Um, because as I stated above in the above paragraph, some of the family members agreed that there were no chairs and tent at the graveside service, but they didn't pay for that. So um, the original complainant who filed the complaint was not the one that paid for the services and he didn't attend all of the meetings with the funeral home. 
So the father is the one that filed the complaint. He also alleged some ADA rights were violated, but there was no proof of same, and all the next of kin agreed to the accommodations uh, that were made for the deceased. Based on all of this, legal's recommendation is closure, because again, this seems to be a dispute really between family members and the actual next of kin who paid for uh, the service and the burial uh, does not dispute how it was handled. Motion on the table approving uh, the motion by Mr. Rom. Do we have a second? We have a second now by um, Mr. Bridges. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Number three is a funeral establishment. Number 2019-039731. This establishment has some disciplinary history, as you note, in the legal report stemming from 8 through 2014. This is also a consumer complaint alleging that the family requested a refund for prepaid funeral services due to a move to another state. There were no dates given in the complaint except for a general statement about waiting two weeks. Legal contacted the respondent regarding the refund to get further explanation regarding the complaint due to not having received a response. At that time, the respondent provided a copy of the response that was actually dated May 28th but, not ha but had not been received in legal until September 5th, which coincides with my conversation with the respondent. The complainant has received a refund and has no desire to move forward with the complaint. Based on all of this, legal's recommendation is closure of this complaint. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Bridges. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Rahm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Number four is a funeral establishment 2019-044381. This establishment has some disciplinary history from 2016 and 2018. The summary of this complaint is that this is a competitor complaint alleging false advertising. The complaint alleges, it, alleges that the respondent has a five-star rating and that veterans are offered a free casket for burial services. The starting price for burials is disclosed in the advertisement. The respondent provided a response with the information about the free casket, but same was not provided in the advertisement. Based on all of this, legal's recommendation is a formal hearing and authorized settlement by a consent order with a $250 civil penalty instructions to correct the advertisement to include the specifics as required in TCA Motion to approve recommendation. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rahm and we have a second by Mr. McKinney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number five is, all, is also a funeral establishment, 2019-045801. You will see there's some disciplinary history from 2003, 2005, and 2014. This summary, this is also a consumer complaint. Uh, the respondent refused to provide um, a date of death plaque, and according to the consumer, the respondent concealed an addendum to a prepaid agreement that provided for a different funeral, I'm sorry, a different burial location at a different cemetery. The date of death was in 2017. 
the consumer provided documentation from the respondent acknowledging that the now deceased had requested a different location and that inc that location was provided in the pre-need arrangements. The respondent did not provide a response to the complaint. The complainant states that she paid an additional eleven ninety five for the burial to occur at a different cemetery. There is still remaining a dispute over the marker with the date of death that had been paid for in advance. The consumer provided emails from the respondent explaining the issue with the marker, but no response about the additional charge for the change of location. The consumer has now received a refund for the payment made toward the burial services. However, I have actually spoken to this complainant um, and now received additional information that, um, so we may want to discuss this some. Um, she is telling me that both of her parents had contracts and uh, the contract provided for both of her parents to have vaults and she has indicated to me over the phone that her mother was buried without a without a vault um, that was given to me after this recommendation um, so I'll defer to the board if based on that you all want to change the recommendation one of the issues is when I'm referring to emails received by the respondent the respondent did not respond to the complaint um, but there have been emails between the complainant and respondent um, so our civil penalty is based on failure to respond to the complaint but now I have this additional information that it appears that the mother did not have a vault which was supposed to be does the um, consumer have documentation to back that claim the that she could provide to you the daughter has the contracts um, that are handwritten um, that provide for the vault I think the issue could be um, if this matter was to go to litigation is that there was a move to a different cemetery um, and there's was apparently some discussion between the complainant and the respondent about whether a vault would be provided in the other cemetery so that if they made arrangements burial in a different cemetery she would have to provide the vault of course one issue is um, she's received a, a refund but I, I feel like you all need to know that all of the issues involved um, that the mother was not buried with a vault um, there seems to be some disagreement about whether or not the vault was going to be included if they chose this other location um, and then she was charged for the move of location but then that money was refunded back to her I think you made a point previously Ms. Spicer in regards to the recommendation for the civil penalty is the failure to respond I think that that needs to be taken care of they need to respond and then as you find out further information then it can be brought back to the board and that's my opinion okay so what we could do um, to resolve this complaint would be um, if I'm if I'm following you correctly we would leave the civil penalty 250 ask them to provide a detailed response um, then if I need to I can bring this back and represent it to the board if I feel like the response does not further clarify what needs to happen exactly okay do we have a motion to the move we have a motion by mr. Rom do we have a second second we have a second by mr. Shackerford all in favor Aye. Aye. any opposed motion carries Number six um, is a removal service 2019-05-2631. This is a consumer complaint dated June 10th, 2019, alleging that the removal service was providing services without a license. The removal service originally registered with the department in 2016 said registration expired in 2018. The removal service has renewed and is currently registered with the department with an expiration date of November 5th, 2020.
um, based on all of this, legal's recommendation is closure. Um, as this board is aware, we register um, removal services, but really do not have any jurisdiction to civil penalties. Um, if for some reason a removal service was not registered with the department, that would likely be a referral to the district attorney's office because the statute provides that it's a criminal offense. Here, there was an actual registration. It had just expired. Um, so legal does not deem it appropriate to refer this matter to the district attorney's office. Any other questions for Ms. Bosser? Is there a motion? So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Rom. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Davis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number seven. Um, this is a funeral establishment, 2019-02-3911. Um, we're classifying it as a represent. Uh, this was presented at our last board meeting, and the board <coughs> specifically asked me to get more information from the funeral home about where the remains were located. This involves an infant. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire summary given my voice, but um, you may recall that this involves an infant where the remains were not um, picked up by the family. At the time I presented this matter, the board asked questions about me getting specific information from the funeral home as to the location of the cremains. I have spoken to the funeral home and received an email with pictures attached that they are still in possession of the cremains. They have attempted to correspond with the family and no one has come to pick up the cremains at this time. They do still have them and they understand to keep them until this is resolved um, it's my understanding I don't have any proof of this but it is my understanding that there may be some lawsuit over this I didn't really understand why there would have been a lawsuit because they've provided information that they've tried to contact the family but it's my understanding that maybe some of the other family members don't maybe understand what's happening and they've considered that uh, an attorney has been in contact with them. So, and beyond that, I don't know, um, but I do know that they have the cremains, which is the issue before, before us. Thank you. And based on all that, legal's recommendation is closure of the complaint, sorry. So move. We have a motion by Mr. McKinney. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Bridges. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Bosser. Thank you. Moving on to the agenda to the director's report, Mr. Gribble. Morning, Mr. President and board members. The first thing I have is a legislative update. Our office has not received any official notification from either the Tennessee State Funeral Director and Mortician Association or the Tennessee Funeral Director Association of any new legislation they intend to pursue during the upcoming legislative session. Of course, it's still early yet, and it's my understanding that one or both of those associations may be working on some legislation, and uh, we'll probably know more about that. Licensee report is a report of licenses administratively approved by the executive director pursuant to the board authority for the period of July 9, 2019 through September 9, 2019. And you have a list of, of an establishment with a change of location and several individuals. Uh, post establishment report. There's one establishment that's reported closing since the last board meeting, Elite Funeral Directors, 320 Hospital Drive in Madison. You may recall that license was only issued by the board to them probably in the March meeting, March or April meeting, but we have received. This 
Preliminary action report for September 10 meeting. This is a report of consent orders that have been administratively accepted or approved by the executive director pursuant to the board authority and as they were reported on the June 2019 and July 2019 regulatory board disciplinary action reports. And you have a list of on us there and the actions that were taken regarding those. Uh, complaint report for today. There are uh, 11 complaints open against funeral directors and or embalmers and 24 complaints open against establishments for a total of 35 complaints. And also just want to relate to the board. I had a good conversa phone conversation yesterday with the Kentucky executive director and uh, talked about some issues that, as you recall, earlier this year they'd written a letter to the board and uh, some additional information about that and we just had a good conversation yesterday and she assured us that things were changing in Kentucky and that there might be some more changes it may be a while but they're aware that uh, especially of the concerns that the Tennessee residents have who have Kentucky licenses about not being able to go and make removals in the state of Kentucky unless they're affiliated establishment so she she was very nice and very cooperative and I just wanted to relay that to you that that concludes my report. I'll be glad to answer any questions that anyone has. Uh, I have a question concerning that removal from the state of Kentucky. Uh, how does that work now? It's a Tennessee licensee cannot go into the state of Kentucky. It's my understanding, Mr. Davis, that not even a Kentucky licensee. Uh, little, I know a, t a Tennessee licensee cannot. And my understanding is if you're a Tennessee resident but possess a Kentucky funeral director's license, you still cannot go in the state of Kentucky and make a removal unless you're affiliated with a Kentucky funeral establishment. That's kind of what she confirmed to me yesterday. And that causes, as you know, problems for because we have so many people that border the Kentucky uh, state line. And, and she said they're aware of that and they're working on that, but she indicated it was going to take some time probably to, to changes to occur regarding that. Any other questions in regards to the director's report to Mr. Gribble? We have a motion to approve the director's report. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. McKinney. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Rom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to the next item on the agenda is the board meeting dates for 2020. Mr. President, there's a list of dates there, January through December, all occurring on the second Tuesday of the month. That the, This conference room has reserved those dates and we would ask you to consider approving those board meeting dates so we can publish the dates for next year. Make a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. We have a second by Mr. Davis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to the <laughs> approval of license applications. Mr. President, board members, there's one individual today to appear before you and then the appearance is going to be via teleconference if you want to I'll go ahead and be calling the number uh, I'll just wait just a second to oh, Miss Bohannon getting her on the line we're sorry when place you might uh, might notice that Ms. Spicer has prepared you a memorandum concerning the Fresh Start Act. That's located a different position on your iPads, but it's a it's a detailed report uh, that you may want to review and questions you have. And at the conclusion of that, she says that uh, based upon the analysis provided that uh, while the board maintains a discretion to deny its li to deny a license, it would not be legal's recommendation to deny this applicant license under the Fresh Start Act. So because of, 
an answer to a question. Ms. Spicer said it was necessary to do this analysis on the Fresh Start Act, and she did that and provided it to me. And of course, we didn't we did not meet in August, so that's why we have you have it before you today and at the September. That is position number five. Okay, that is position number five. So we don't have to go through the process that we went through the last time we had one of these. We don't have to go through all that. Um, let me explain something as well. When this um, was brought to my attention, there was some concern about whether this was a misdemeanor or felony conviction. This is a misdemeanor conviction. Um, so legal's position would be there's really, unless you find other grounds in the funeral statute, there would not be any discretion to deny the license based on the fact that this was a misdemeanor. The issue was this occurred 10 years ago, and the, the criminal code has changed since then. Um, I've also called Bradley County and confirmed that this was a misdemeanor conviction. Um, it was for simple possession. Um, I was hoping that Miss Vincent would be available today in case you had questions. Um, I won't speak on any other options you may or may not have, um, but obviously, based on this being a misdemeanor, legal would stand by the recommendation not to. I do not believe, based on your question, that we have to go through the factors of the Fresh Start Act because it's a misdemeanor. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions since the analysis has already been done. That's good. That was that was very time consuming. Spicer, you made reference to the fact that uh, the criminal code had changed since the time that this act was committed and, and charged and settled. Was it a misdemeanor at the time the act was committed? I believe you said 10 years ago. Was it a misdemeanor then, or was it a felony then and a misdemeanor now? It was a misdemeanor at the time she was. Okay. Um, and I would have to go back and look at the criminal code again. I pulled the criminal code from the time, but of course now it's different. Likely, likely it's still a misdemeanor, um, but I don't want to go on record saying that, but it was a misdemeanor at the time that she was convicted of. Thank you. And as far as the office knows, as far as uh, she's had no problem since then. Not that legal is aware. When you look through the application in her narrative, uh, I think that statement's probably, I don't have it right in front of me, but I remember she makes an attestation that she has, has not had any uh, convictions since then and that she has no no drug addiction problem or drug abuse narrative there under the PDF. Substance abuse problems. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. How are you? This is Lisa Bohan. Hi, Lisa. Um, you're on speaker with the funeral board, um, and they'll have some questions for you. So um, if you could just speak clearly into the, into your phone and let me know if you can't hear any of us. Yes, ma'am. Set this up for you, Mr. President and board members. This is on the phone is Tiffany Nicole Vincent, who is a resident of Chattanooga, Tennessee. She is temporarily locate, relocated to, in Georgia, so that's why she's not here before you in person today. She is seeking license as a funeral director and an embalmer. And based on the applications, the board may, among other pertinent statutes and rules, specifically examine the applicability of Tennessee Code Annotated 62-5-317 in making a determination as whether the applicant meets the requirements for licensure. Ms. Vincent, the board members are reviewing your application and the analysis done by the legal staff, and they'll have some questions for you in just a second. Okay. 
while they're doing that, do you want to make any kind of opening remarks to the board? Um, yes, please. Uh, good morning, board, and thank you for reviewing me. My name is Tiffany Vincent. I'm a proud graduate of John A. Gepton. Uh, I've completed uh, my apprenticeship and all requirements, and I do apologize and regret that I'm unfortunately unable to be in front of you um, working out of state in Georgia. Um, I did answer yes to a question on my application. I wanted to be fully honest. I had an arrest that's going on 10 years ago. Um, I was at a concert and embarrassingly had a marijuana joint. I pleaded guilty and paid a fine. I'm very embarrassed. <laughs> and uh, that's my one and only charge. It was a different season of my life uh, before I received my calling to funeral service, in which I'm very passionate about. And I do ask that you all could humbly uh, extend forgiveness to me and allow me to receive my license. Miss Vincent, this is Pam Spicer. I'm legal counsel for the board. Just to confirm, yes, uh, this was from 2010, correct? Yes, ma'am. And when you said you pled guilty, that was to a misdemeanor for simple possession, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you paid a fine, but there was no jail time, correct? There was no jail time, and I did pay a fine. Um, the total I paid was 1148 and 50 cents. Legal does not have any additional questions. Board members have any questions for Ms. Vincent? Based upon the information that we have here and Ms. Vincent's uh, testimony, I'll move that this uh, application be granted. We have a recommendation or approved a and a motion on the table from Mr. McKinney. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Rahm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Vincent, congratulations. Thank you so much. Ms. Vincent, Thank you. this is Lisa Bohannon, and I will give you a call you. once the meeting is adjourned to discuss the further aspects of this. Yes, absolutely. Thank you all so very much. Great. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Rebel, do we have any establishments? There are no establishments to appear before you today, Mr. President. Thank you. Any new business? We have a motion to adjourn. We have a motion by Mr. Rom. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. McKinney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. No. <laughs>